Um, yeah. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. Today, we have Chi Peng as our speaker. He's a postdoc at Simons Institute. Today, he's going to talk about his work, Non-Uniformity non Quantum Advice and Quantum Random Oracle. Let's welcome him. Okay. Uh, thanks, Ke. Thanks, Ke, for the organization. And thanks, everybody, for uh, coming to my uh, talk. So I know it's a, it's a Eurocrypt deadline, so everybody should be uh, extremely busy. And thanks again for coming. So, um, yeah, so this talk is uh, mostly based on my upcoming work. And also I will talk about the recent development on uh, non-uniformity in the quantum random oracle model. So, uh, so let's start. Um, yes, so, and in this talk, um, we will study the security of hash function. So a hash function is a fun function H that takes an arbitrary length input and outputs a, a digest. And a, a, a hash function is publicly known to everybody, which means everyone can get the code and evaluate the hash function on its own device. So a good hash function um, also needs to uh, satisfy some, some desired properties for different uh, crypto applications. For example, you want uh, the most basic property of one is collision resistance. And also um, you may use hash function as a, as a one-way function, or you want it to satisfy a certain property like proof of work. And also you may also want to use your hash function for certain uh, cryptographic transformation like fiat Shamir. So, and, and this is like how we use hash function. This is what the crypt cryptographic hash function is. Um, so here is an example of a, of a practical hash function we use in practice. So which is the uh, secure hash algorithm, the second generation. So um, I, I, I mean, this may not be the, the best hash function we use in practice, uh, but I, I choose the second generation because the picture looks better on the slides. So the, the SHA-2 algorithm um, uh, is basically uh, based on Merkle Demgard. So, which takes uh, uh, this uh, internal uh, building block F, which is a compressing function, and it will uh, takes input uh, uh, from the last block and also take the, the uh, from the last compressing function and also take the next block and outputs uh, the next outcome. And finally, uh, it is the, the final hash. And also uh, it re relies on the internal building block, which is something that looks pretty, pretty complicated. Um, so you, we, we want this, this SHA-2 to satisfy a certain property. For example, you want to say, uh, for SHA-2, it's hard to find a pre-image of a random image, or we want to say the SHA-2 can be used as a PRG, or it's a, a collision resistant hash, and many, many others, like proof of work, Fiat Shamir. So uh, despite the, the hash function, the practical hash function we use is uh, really efficient. The, the, there's still um, something bad about uh, this practical hash function is the security is hard to argue. So therefore, um, uh, because you, you see like they are all building blocks and even this like the compressing function is super complicated. So, um, so facing with this uh, difficulty, uh, Belair and Rogaway, they put forward this, uh, this build for and clean uh, methodology, which, which they call random Oracle model. So in this model, um, so they use this model to model an ideal hash function. So in this model, there's a function f, which is a end-to-end -end, uniformly random function uh, chosen at the beginning of a game. So the, the random oracle methodology says that for most of uh, natural applications of hash, hash function, the best security you can uh, get in practice with the best possible instantiation of the hash function is roughly equal to the security you can get in the random oracle model. So in other words, there are always for, for, for most of the applications, there always exists the best instantiation of hash functions such that uh, the best you can do is simply uh, by, by uh, work in the random Oracle model. And in the random Oracle model, the adversary can only interact with the random Oracle in a black box way. In other words, it can only see the input and out, output behavior of, of the random Oracle. So in other words, the best instantiation of the hash function is basically you can only see the input and output behavior. All right, so uh, that's the random oracle methodology. So there's a uh, several several plus for random oracle. Uh, for example, it provides a very simple proofs. Um, you, you can you can imagine um, uh, here here's some example. So uh, for example, for one way function, you can say um, the hash function f is lazy sample, which means if you don't query a, a outcome, 
then the outcome remains uniformly random and it's completely hidden from the from the adversary. So therefore, you can get a very simple proof, and also the the, the achieved bound is very precise. For one-way function, it's t over n, which matches the brute force attack in a classical setting, and and also for PRG for CRHS uh, collision resistance hash function, there the proof are all pretty simple, and also the bond is uh, tight. Sorry, what is the oh, what is the t here? Uh, t uh, okay, sorry about that. T is the the running time in practice. I mean the running time of the of the algorithm. In the plane model, or you can think about it as the number of queries you made to the to the random oracle. I see. Yes. Thanks. Okay. So, right. So basically, it captures uh, uh, all the possible generic attacks the the adversary can can do. All right. So that's the uh, random oracle model. Uh, okay. So uh, yes. So however, there's um, cracks in this beautiful model. Which is uh, which we show as follows. So indeed, there's mismatch between random oracle model and the actual uh, practical attacks when we consider uh, pre-processing. So this is first observed by Uru. I mean, indeed, there's like much. Uh, uh, there, there are some works uh, consider the attacks, but what the the lower bound is considered starting from the work by Uru and then the work by the other authors. So let's look at the the first example, which is the collision resistance hash. So in the random oracle model, we can say the best you can do is simply the Bercy paradox, uh, which achieves t square over n. That means if you if the algorithm only makes t queries, then the the probability or the advantage that you find a pair of collisions is t square over n. Okay, so simply from uh, Bercy paradox. Uh, but in practice, if you can hard code a collision, it's the the attack basically takes no time and it can output a collision with probability always one. So um, that that's for uh, collision resistant hash. So it will be even more interesting if we consider one-way function. So still in random oracle model, the the uh, probability is t over n, as we just uh, discussed before, uh, because every every uh, every query you made to the random oracle will uh, give you a random outcome, and the outcome will uh, be the the target image you want to find the pre-image uh, with probability one over n by a simple union bound. It is t over n. So uh, but in practice, there's a very beautiful attack, which is called a rainbow table attack. So uh, in this attack, uh, there, the, there are two stages. Uh, one is the offline stage and the other one is the online stage. So the offline stage, it will, uh, takes a lot of computational resources, but at the end of the day, the online stage will produce a data structure, which we call a rainbow table of size S. So here, this S denotes the advice or the size uh, the, the size of the advice or the, the data structure, which is the, the size of the rainbow table. And then when it comes to the online stage, uh, for you to uh, invert a, a pre-image, it only takes time st over n plus s squared t over n squared. So uh, let, let's look at the first term. That basically means if you have a device of size s, then uh, it can, uh, so there's like multiplicative vector uh, to the brute force, the classical brute force attack, which is t over n. So with the piece of classical device, it can um, drastically increase the speed uh, of finding a pre-image. So it's a it's a very beautiful attack, but I won't have time to talk about that too much today. So if you if you don't know this uh, rainbow table, I highly recommend you to to read about it. So and in this talk, I will use these two symbols, this rainbow and the, the table to denote the uh, rainbow table attack in the rest of the talk. Okay, so that's the mismatch between uh, random oracle model and the, the practical attacks. All right. So um, yes, so facing with this attack, um, in all the previous work, they provide a model which captures non-uniform attacks in the in the quantum random oracle model. Uh, sorry, in the classical random oracle model. So in this model, there are, they they gave uh, they basically say there are two adversaries. One is the one in the offline stage preparing the bounded advice with unbounded pre-processing time. And then there's another uh, 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 there's another algorithm which gets the advice from the offline adversary and then conduct an efficient online attack. So um, then you may ask why non-uniform non attacks are reasonable models. 
There are a couple of reasons. So as, uh, as we are cryptographers, we usually prefer stronger security. So stronger security is always better, especially if we don't need to do too much, we don't need to sacrifice our, the efficiency of the protocol. And the, the second reason is um, indeed this uh, non-uniform attacks are realistic. So for example, this pre-processing attack uh, for pre-image search for a hash function is indeed uh, can be implemented and give you a huge difference between, uh, by the way, uh, is the screen, uh, are we still sharing the screen or? Uh, yes, we can see the rainbow table and a, and a graph for computation time for password. Okay, graph. interesting. Okay, it's uh, weird on my end. Okay, if, if there's anything wrong, please, please tell me. Sure. All right. So. Yes, there is a diff. Uh, yes, so so indeed, this attack can be implemented um, in practice. And if you're interested, you can you can look at the website. It's an open source uh, software um, about the about the rainbow table attack. Okay, so um, yes, so facing with this, uh, so so we know there's like a non-uniform attack, which uh, th this model gives you a very nice characterization of what non-uniform or what pre-processing uh, can do in the quantum uh, in the in a classical random oracle model so the question is can we save the beautiful random oracle model from non-uniform attacks and the answer uh, is of course yes otherwise we don't have this uh, work but uh, so for classical setting uh, starting uh, starting from the work by Uru and then the work by Dodi score and cuts and then also by a sequence of follow-up work by uh, 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 by Coretti, uh, Dodisco, and Steinberg, they show that indeed uh, we can prove security. And, and we can show that um, there's a tight characterization of what we can do in the standard model with pre-processing and what we can do in the, in the, quant uh, in the classical random oracle model with pre-processing. All right, so, um, so that's the formal definition of uh, non-uniform adversaries in the random oracle model. Still, we have a random oracle that is sampled at the very beginning of the game, which uh, you can view it as the, the hash function. And then there are the two stage non-uniform attacker, A1 and A2. So A1F is unbounded, which produce, um, it, it can take, uh, it can make arbitrary number of queries. The computational power is, uh, unbounded and at the end of the day it produces a bounded and also oracle dependent device we call it uh, sigma so sigma can be arbitrary function about the the oracle f and it will passes the the advice to the second adversary which is the adversary for the online attack so here we don't care about the running time of a1 it just uh, the goal the ultimate goal of a1 is to prepare a relatively short advice for a2 to conduct the online attack. And for A2, the running time is bounded because we want to characterize um, the, the scenario where A2 needs to um, efficiently break some crypto system. So A2 is bounded, but it also takes the uh, advice from the first stage A1. So because it takes uh, some advice, which is Oracle dependent, this makes A2 uh, non-uniform, right? So that's the picture for the uh, the two stage uh, attackers, A1 and A2. And here we'll also care about two parameters. One is S and one is T. So as we just mentioned in the, in the example of rainbow table, S stands for the size of the rainbow table, or in general, S stands for uh, the size of the device provided by the first stage attacker A1. And T is the running time of the second uh, of the online adversary, of the online attacker A2, or um, in the random Oracle model, in the idealized model, T is the number of queries made by A2, right? So with this definition, if we can prove any security bounds in this model against non-uniform attacks, we can uh, have a similar uh, like uh, security established uh, it's like a heuristic we can establish such a security in the in the in practice all right so that's the uh, formal definition of uh, uniform attackers two-stage uniform attackers in the random oracle model so by defining by defining uh, non-uniform attackers in this way um, in the previous work they show that um, 
for uh, for CRHF, the, the non-uniform security in the random Oracle model is actually one. So here, one, whenever I talk about security, I actually, I mean the, the maximum uh, winning probability. So the higher uh, this number is, the lower the security is. So it's a little bit counterintuitive, but that really means the, the success probability. So how, how can it be? Basically, you can just let the A1 attacker to find a pair of collisions and pass the pair of collisions to A2. And A2 can simply output that pair of collisions. So that matches with what we know in the, in the practical attacks. And for one way function, they prove that the non-uniform security is ST over N. And for, um, for, for the practical attack, it is ST over N plus uh, S squared T over N squared, which is, uh, comes from the rainbow table. Sir, I have a quick question. Yes, uh, please. Are you assuming that A1 has like unbounded computational power to find these collisions? Uh, yes. So uh, as, as we, as we see here, uh, we model A1 oh, as being bounded. So, uh, the reason, I mean, there are two reasons. I, I, I mean, actually I had a, I, I had a slides in the, uh, here, but I didn't talk about it. So, I mean, there are two reasons. One reason is, um, assuming A1 is unbounded is actually, uh, easier to consider, right? I mean, you don't put any constraint on what A1 can do. You simply only, uh, focus on the, the device, focus on, uh, the size of the advice. So it will be simpler. The second thing uh, is like, it actually provides stronger security, right? Because you don't care about what A1 can do. You only care about the size of the advice. It's indeed provides stronger security. So yes, All right. Okay, so let, let's back to the slides. Yes. So here, um, yeah, A1 needs to be unbounded. So, and then it can provide uh, the, the pair of collision. All right. So yeah, so that's uh, what we know about uh, collision resistant hash and the one-way function. So therefore, uh, to make collision resistant hash really uh, secure in the non-uniform setting, salting is really needed. So, and indeed, uh, in the paper by uh, Coretti, Dodi, Skor, and Steinberg, they show that salting is not necessary. Is not only uh, uh, helpful for achieving non-uniform security for collision resistant hash functions. It actually generically defeats any pre-processing attack. So in other words, if you want uh, your protocol or your, your, the security game to be secure against classical pre-processing attacks, you can just simply use this uh, sorting mechanism, which I will talk about it uh, later, but you probably already know sorting is um, a mechanism where you uh, put an extra uh, small piece of data into the hash function. So with the, and, and this piece of data will be random every time you use the hash function. So it will um, defeat the, what, what do we know as this non-uniform attacks, right? And um, so that's about sorting. And for, and then you may already notice there's a gap between the non-uniform security in the idealized models and the, the actual, the practical attacks. So here, uh, indeed, this um, to 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 closing the gap is actually uh, difficult. So, uh, in the work by Corrigan Gibbs and Colgan, they show that uh, there's a barrier for uh, filling this gap. That is the gap s squared t over n squared. So, um, if you can uh, work towards uh, uh, closing the gap, it will provide you. Uh, it will solve some open questions for circuit lower bounds and the problem, open problems in communication complexity. So here we will basically take it for granted and assume the gap exists there and we cannot fix for, uh, for, uh, for now. So we will ignore this issue and assume this is uh, pretty much optimal, this uh, non-uniform security in the random Oracle ST over N. All right, so um, that's about the, the classical results. Uh, any questions? Okay, so, right. Okay, so uh, it's time to uh, switch to quantum world. So uh, everything I just talked about is all, the, all about like classical random oracle, classical non-uniform attacks, classical device. So, um, and when it comes to the, the quantum world, uh, things gets uh, quite different. So uh, the first of all is about the how to model a quantum adversary. So a quantum adversary, uh, of course, use quantum computers to, br to break critical system. So here uh, they can use quantum physics to perform any computation. And most notably, I will, um, so in this talk, I will uh, 
uh, focus on these two types of things. One is uh, the ability to compute a classical function in superposition. So that means uh, uh, the quantum computer can prepare uh, a superposition of some possible inputs and uh, compute the classical function uh, coherently. So at the end of the day, it will get a, a list of input and output pairs, but coherently stored in log n qubits. All right. So that's one thing a quantum computer can do. And the other thing is, of course, the famous Grover search, which says you can search in an unstructured database with time t squared over n. There, this t is also uh, denoted for uh, the running time or the number of queries in either the standard setting or in the in the idealized model. All right. So, and back to our favorite uh, hash functions. The first ability says that. Uh, a quantum a quantum adversary can compute a hash function in superposition, right? Because we know that the hash function is publicly is publicly known to everyone. Everybody can gets to see the code has white box access to the hash function. So if the adversary has the quantum computer, it can of course um, evaluate the hash function coherently, and that's basically the uh, the crucial difference between classical and quantum adversary. That's the the, the quantum access to the hash function, right? So, and with this uh, crucial difference, uh, Bonnet et al, they uh, uh, propose the following uh, idealized models in the quantum setting, which they call a quantum random oracle model. So uh, in, uh, in the quantum random oracle model, it's very, very similar to the classical random oracle model. Well, the only difference is the, the superposition access. Uh, to the to the uh, random oracle, and the quantum random oracle heuristic says that for most natural applications of hash function, the best security you can guarantee you can get in the in practice with the best possible instantiation uh, of of f is the same as the the quantum adversary with uh, quantum access to the hash function f. Okay, so that's the uh, quantum random oracle model. Or what is p to the power of the state of f, or is just an notation? Uh, could you repeat that again? So, so what is like p to the power of the the p it's, of f? So, or it's or it's just notation. a notation? Oh, it's it's, it's a, a it's a like note. You have access to the okay. function. Um, yeah, yes. Access. Yes. Yeah, the the question is this p to the uh cat f. So that's a notation. And that's to emphasize the ability of quantum access to the to the uh, random oracle. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yep. All right. So yes. So that's the quantum random oracle methodology. Um. All right. So. Uh. Okay. So. Uh. So I mean, classically, we know there are some class for random oracle model. The first one is it provides simpler uh, simpler proofs, and also it provides with uh, precise bound. So it of course provides precise bound because um, we know that for when we function for PRG and for CRHFs, they all provide bounds that are very very close or exactly matches the algorithm we know. So uh, sorry about that. Uh, one second. Oh, because I'm at home, so my my vac box starts at two. Um, all right. So yes. So they provide uh, the quantum random oracle provides precise bound. But the problem is, um, does that really provide sim simple proofs? I would say yes or no. Because if you really want to analyze uh, the quantum security of SHA-2 or SHA-3, it will be very, very difficult and very tedious, I, I believe. But still, it will, it's much more difficult than analyzing a classical random oracle. Okay. But still, uh, with quantum random oracle, we can prove security uh, for one-way function, for CHF. Fiat Shamir and all the applications. All right. Okay. So then, uh, okay. So it's time to look at non uniform uh, quantum attacks. So uh, for non uniform quantum attacks, it's also uh, modeled as two stage non uniform attacks, A1 and A2. Here, A1 is unbounded, still provide uh, produce bounded oracle dependent advice sigma. And it's exactly the same. 
uh, and uh, okay, so here I, I would say this A1 only has classical access to F. So if you if you pay attention to the notation, this A1 only has access to F. That's because um, it is unbounded, so there's no difference between A1 gets quantum access or classical access. It can always uh, take the whole F as input and just do arbitrary computation on F. So it doesn't make any difference. And then uh, for the online attack A2, it gets quantum access to F. And with a bounded number of queries, uh, let's say it's T queries. So still there are two parameters. One is the size of the advice and one is uh, the running time or the number of queries made by the online adversary. Okay. So, and there's another um, crucial difference you need to uh, look at, which is the, the type of the advice. So in the, in the classical setting, the advice is only, it's always a, a S bit string, but in the quantum setting, it can be either classical or quantum. So because we model this A2 as a quantum machine, so it can uh, always uh, run a computation with auxiliary, in, auxiliary input being classical or auxiliary input being S qubits of a device. So that's another um, uh, difference between uh, non-uniform quantum attackers and non-uniform classical attackers. And this being either classical or quantum really plays a diff uh, really makes it things different. Okay. So uh, that's the uh, non-uniform. Yep. Does they only have classical access to F? For, for what, sorry? Hey, does A1 have classical access to F or is it quantum access to F? Uh, A one has uh, classical access to F because I, I just said so uh, because we assume A one is unbounded. So uh -huh. having classical or quantum doesn't doesn't uh, change the nature of, of A one. Yes, okay. you can always assume A one just takes F as as the input. It can run. Uh, it can compute arbitrary functional arbitrary quantum state depends on F. So it doesn't doesn't make difference. Yes. All right. So here, to, to make things simple, I just say here, F is the, the classical uh, access. All right. OK, so so let's um, uh, have a look at the best uh, upper bound or the best algorithm we can think about in the for the non-uniform quantum attacks. So um, let, let's look at the attack for uh, one-way function or, or pre-image finding. It's, so um, the, the best thing we are aware of for a long time is the following. So with S bits of device, we let this uh, S bits of device to be the rainbow table. So uh, think about the classical attack. So this will be the classical uh, advice and their corresponds to the rainbow table. So um, for the online attack, you either run the rainbow table algorithm with the advice sigma. So that's the purely classical um, non-uniform attacks, or you completely forget about the advice and you run Grover search without advice. So that, that's a very trivial algorithm, right? Because you never use the advice uh, for the quantum algorithm. You only use it and you only run the, uh, the, this uh, non-uniform attacks in a classical way. So this attacks achieve the advantage as follows. So the first two terms corresponding to um, the rainbow table attacks, which is purely classical, use classical device and, and running uh, also for the online stage is also classical, or it's uh, run the Grover search algorithm. Right? So they are basically the concatenation, the addition of to the two parts. So uh, yes, so that's the trivial algorithm. So then seeing this, we may wonder, does advice really helps quantum algorithm? Because from what we have seen here, the advice does not help the Grover algorithm. It does not speed up Grover. The only advantage we have obtained from a classical advice is from the classical rainbow table. Okay. So, um, yeah, so we just uh, look at the upper bound. It's time to look at the lower bound. So starting from the work by Naibi, Arison, Beloved, and Travison, they study the problem. They, they are looking at if quantum, if classical device or quantum device can speed up, can speed up a, a one-way function. So, uh, so this study is initialized by uh, this work, NIBT, and they show that with classical device, 
uh, with s bits of classical device and, t and the running time t, uh, you cannot achieve success probability better than s t squared over it. So uh, we can look at the upper bound we just get from our trivial algorithm, which is s t uh, over n plus s squared t over n squared from remote table and t squared over n from Grover. So still there's a gap, right? Because this lower bound suggests that it may be possible that the S helps the, the term T squared over N, which comes from Grover search. So the, the bond does not rule out the possibility that the, Gro uh, the Grover search can be speed up using uh, the classical device. And then later on, um, uh, Han, Sagawa, Yamakawa, Chang, Liao, and Qian, they also study the problem. So, okay, I, 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 want, I, I didn't mention, so the work by Naebi, Arison, Bilox, and Treveson, they study the problem not relative to a random oracle. They study the problem relative to a point function. So the point function is almost zero, except there is one point, which is one. So um, therefore, it's not applicable to, to say any security in the, in the random oracle mode. So, but the, the work later by uh, Han Sagawa, Yamakawa, and Chang Liao Chen, they show that indeed, Relative to a random oracle, you can show uh, with either classical or quantum device, the lower bound is st squared over n. But still, it does not rule out the possibility that um, a piece of classical or quantum device would help Grover search and help you to uh, invert a one way function much quicker than what we can do uh, from this uh, trivial algorithm. All right. So, um, yes. And then most recently, uh, my, uh, my work with uh, Chang Guo and Chen, we show that for a classical device, indeed, it's uh, pretty much impossible. In other words, the quantum device is, can, can never help, I mean, almost never helps the, the, uh, the a classical device can never help the online algorithm. So basically we can have a look at the lower bound and the upper bound. So the, the only term that's missing is the s squared t over n squared term. So we already see the gap in the classical setting. So in other words, if we ignore this gap, then uh, the lower bound matches with the upper bound. So um, basically that says the, the, the lower bound is tight in light, in, light, uh, in light of the classical barrier. And for the, and also we, uh, in the recent work, we showed that with quantum advice, the probability is rough, uh, the, the advantage is roughly the same, but to the power of uh, one third. So if you only um, care about the query complexity, in other words, if you only care about for what parameter regime of S and T that makes the probability a constant, then the, like the, our previ previous result on classical device and a quantum, a quantum device actually achieves the, the same result. But, if you really look at, if you're really interested in the actual security, then to achieve, let's say 128 bit security against um, T equals to two to the uh, 64 and S equals to, to also to, uh, two to the 64, then you would um, require the security parameter for the hash function to satisfy, to be at least uh, uh, 258 bits against classical device. But for quantum device, you would require the security parameter to be at least 512. So indeed, it um, shows a pretty large gap for the concrete security gap, and also it affects the parameter choices. Right. So um, that's uh, the the result for uh, both classical and quantum from the previous work um, for one-way functions. Uh, so the upper bound for classical and quantum are the same. The upper bound for the, uh, it's the same, yes. This is best we know. And the reason why they are the same because we don't even use a device for quantum algorithm, right? We only use it for rainbow table. So there's uh, no difference for the, for either classical or quantum uh, advice, yes. Uh, so is there any like, takeaway so far? Like, why quantum has a one third in the exponential? Um, oh, sorry, that, that's the, that's the, so indeed there's no such a gap. I will talk about it in uh, shortly. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's the, that's the, the result in the, in the previous work. So, um, all right. So, and 
uh, okay, so that's for one-way function. And for, for PRGs, the, the bound, the gap between classical advice and a quantum advice is even worse. So it's not just uh, not tight for um, extra security, it's not even non-tight for uh, the query complexity. So that's the uh, security for PRG with S and T, and that's the security for uh, PRG with quantum advice, which is S uh, to the fifth T over N plus S to the fourth T squared over N to the one over uh, 19. It looks pretty artificial. And, uh, and, and at the time uh, of, of the work CGLQ20, we don't know how to fix that yet. And similarly, if we want to achieve the, a concrete security against uh, uh, a concrete security of 128 bit against uh, 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 against adversary uh, t equals to s equals to two to the uh, 64, then it would tell us for uh, security against classical device, we need to choose lambda, the security parameter, to be 512, and for quantum device, it should be much much larger. Okay. And finally. Um, uh, yes, and finally, there's a result about sorting that says uh, sorting indeed defeats pre-processing with classical device, but the result is also non-tight for quantum device. Okay, so um, therefore we ask the question, does quantum device really help? That's exactly the question uh, proposed. For example, we would ask if there's any uh, version of the, the rainbow table attack, the quantum rainbow table uh, attack using quantum device. So that's the, the actual result we showed in this work. So we show that indeed all these gaps are artificial. There's no gap between classical and quantum device. So uh, mm -hmm. we, can, we can look at the result one by one. So for one way function, we show that there's no such a quantum rainbow table. The best you can do is almost uh, by, uh, is almost using the classical device to do rainbow table attack, or you run the Grover search algorithm. So here it will either uh, comes from st over n, which is the, the rainbow table attack or t squared over n, which is to run the Grover search algorithm. So, which means even quantum advice does not provide you with the quantum version of rainbow table. And uh, also it gives a tight result, uh, tight, tight to the classical, uh, the, the statement of classical advice for PRGs. And finally for sorting, uh, we also show that Sorting indeed defeats pre-processing quantum attack, even with quantum advice. So let me explain more about the last result. So, uh, so in this work, we show that sorting defeats pre-processing even against quantum advice. So let's first talk about what is uh, sorting. Here's the example um, about a collision resistant hash. So uh, in the regular uh, definition of collision resistance and hash, the goal is to find two uh, distinct inputs that maps to the same output, right? So for solid collision resistance and hash, uh, the, the game is slightly changed. So uh, the, the adversary is given a random sort, uh, A, we call it a random sort. And the goal is to find uh, two distinct inputs such that uh, f of ax is not e uh, is equal to f of ax prime. In other words, uh, the goal is to find distinct inputs that under the function f of a, you can, you can view this f of a as a new hash function relative to this uh, random sort. Under this new hash function, they form a pair of collision. And in general, we can define uh, a generic compiler that takes any security game and map the security game uh, to a sorted version by just uh, having a, a fresh random sort and the game is executed under that random sort. All right, and then we use uh, this two notation V and V sort. So this V is to denote the, the security or the, or the probability against the T query quantum algorithm in the standard model. So here, uh, this V will be T square over N, uh, 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 or sorry, it will be a T cube over N, which is the, the complexity for finding a collision in the quantum, in the, in the quantum case. And V sort will be the ST non-uniform security for this sorted game, uh, the second game in the in the green box. All right. Um, yep. So by that probability, you mean the probability of finding such a collision pair? The the maximum probability taken over or ST non-uniform algorithm to find such a collision pair uh, relative to a random sort. Yes. So, 
so the randomness is taking over all such algorithms. The randomness, uh, the randomness taken over all uh, salt and all random and and the randomness of the oracles, and it's and it will then take over the maximum over all possible algorithms. Yes, I see. It's the maximum. Yes. So in other words, the best you can do, the best probability you can achieve against. Uh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. All right. So, um, okay. So then our results show the following. So when G is a search game, for example, when we function and collision is using hash, then the security against S, uh, against ST non-uniform quantum algorithm, even with quantum device is at most, so here is not equal, it's uh, at most, four times the original uh, security times ST over K. So here k is the size of the salt space. So if you choose this k large enough, it will this uh, the additive term will be complete completely subsumed by the security vt. So in other words, as long as the salt space is large enough, there's no difference. Especially because this uh, search game, this four uh, this four multiplicative factor doesn't uh, is is not important. So the security against st non uniform uh, algorithm, quantum algorithm with quantum device is the same. As a security in the in the standard random, random oracle model, so that's the first result about search game, and the second result says when the game G is a decision game, uh, let's say a PRG, or or any decision game you can you can think about, um, then the security V salt is roughly equal to uh, V T plus square root of S T over K. So and similarly, if you choose this K large enough the v, VT will subsume the second additive term and it says the security uh, V salt is the same as VT. So in other words, if you choose this K, uh, the K large enough or the, the salt space large enough, the security in the standard uh, random oracle model is the same as that against non-uniform uh, quantum alg algorithms. So here, uh, the, 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 the reason we put a different uh, theorem for decision game is simply because of at the multiplicative term four. So for decision game, the probability is at least half, right? So uh, this four will completely destroy the statement if you uh, are not careful. So that's why we have a separate statement for decision games. All right, so um, any questions uh, for this uh, sorting defeats pre-processing? Okay, so Oh, sorry, any question? No, okay. So um, yes, so here are some takeaways before I, I talk a little bit about the, the techniques. So um, so the first of all, we show that uh, for many natural security games based on hash functions, these two set of adversaries achieve the same power in a generic way. So here, BQP poly is basically all the quantum, efficient quantum adversaries with uh, classical device. And PQPQ poly is all the efficient quantum adversaries with uh, quantum device. And we show that for many natural games like one way function um, and PRGs and many, many more, they achieve roughly the same power if they, um, if we, uh, if they work in the, in the idealized model, in other words, generically. And also sorting defeats any pre-processing attacks. In other words, if you want your protocol or you want your security game to be secure against a quantum pre-processing attack, even with quantum advice, then you can just use thought. As long as it is large enough, <clears throat> it is uh, the security will be the same as that in the in the standard Oracle model. And finally, uh, we show that for some contrived game and for a specific parameter regime, that is uh, t equals to zero, which means you cannot make any query in the online stage with a little bit weird uh, scenario and connect to the uh, one-way communication complexity. Uh, one-way communication, uh, like one-way quantum communication complexity. In that scenario, um, quantum device is indeed exponentially better. This is based on a recent work uh, by my PhD advisor, Mark Dendry, and uh, my good friend, Takashi Yamakawa. I won't touch too much about this result, but if you're interested, I have a, I have a, a discussion there about the uh, one-way one -way communication complexity. And indeed, I realized uh, from the literature of one-way communication complexity, you can turn many, many games into, um, into an example here. That is, you can make a uh, different, uh, like their result into a specific game that um, shows quantum advice is ex exponentially better. 
but they're all contrived game and does not say anything about um, the application we care about in the in the standard uh, sorry uh, the natural games in the random oracle model. Yes. So um, just just a clarification question for t yeah. equal to zero. Does that mean like a two just get the advice and output a pair without? Uh, uh, yes, exactly. Okay. Or but but here I'm not I'm not considering like one-way function or collision system. It's just some some very very um, artificial games just to demonstrate there for some very specific regime there's exponential separation. But uh, for natural games, I I don't know. Yes. So, Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So I mean, this. I mean, to the the reason for this example is I want to see. Uh, maybe I I think maybe it is helpful for understanding quantum device and may also help to achieve a general separation in the future. I'm 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 half half to to believe if there's a separation like a separation for a quantum device and a classical device in the in the random oracle model. All right. So um, okay. So uh, let's uh, talk about the the idea overview. So um, so let's record the classical non-uniform attackers. So it consists a one, a two, uh, offline, online, and sigma is the advice. So um, right. So let let's look at a very simplified case. That is, one sigma is a very very well structured device. So in this case, sigma is simply a list of input and output pairs. And then it will play the security game with the, the well-structured advice. So then uh, the distribution uh, from a to view of this uh, function f conditional on the advice actually has a very nice structure, right? So it's simply, uh, if, if you write f as f1 to fn, each of fi is a random variable, then we know that um, most of f of x is uniformly random, except on the x of i, uh, f should equals to yi. That's kind of fixed by this well-structured advice. Okay, so uh, in this model, uh, security is easy to argue. Uh, I, I will show how to argue that later, but basically you can think about if the challenge for, for one-way function, if the challenge avoids all these prefix coordinates, then the advice does not help. Uh, so you can basically argue the security uh, in the same way as uh, that in the standard random oracle model. So, uh, okay, so uh, this is basically the, the same slides as before, but then what I wanna say is, um, then they proposed by, so first proposed by Uru and then improved by the later work by Coretti, uh, Dodisco and uh, Steinberg. They show uh, a theorem statement called uh, pre-sampling. They show that even for, uh, for any arbitrary device, it's pretty much the same as well-structured device but the, the length of the advice will be longer. Okay, so uh, let me uh, talk about the model. So they first define uh, a model called the P bit fixing random Oracle model. So in this model, there's also, uh, there are also two stages. One is the offline phase and the other one is the online phase. So um, in, the, in the offline phase, and this Oracle is arbitrarily fixed on, on at most P coordinates. So here, this p, the the the, the p on the the p-bit fixing random oracle model is the number of coordinates the attacker can fix. So the attacker fix at most p coordinates uh, in the offline phase by fixing basically means you choose the out uh, you choose the outcome for that input. And then the remaining coordinates are chosen uniformly at random by the challenger or by the environment, which is independent of the uh, sorry the. Do we still get the screen share? Uh, yes. Okay, it's weird. I'm sorry about that. I mean, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, so it, it's just pop out some like a warning message. I'm, I'm not sure what happened. Okay, so. Uh, it right, it looks so. good on my side. So. Okay, 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 cool. Yeah, if that's uh, it's good, that should be, yeah, it's excellent. Okay, so then, uh, okay. So the remaining coordinates, uh, will be chosen ra uniformly random by the challenge. So, so here's the example. Uh, the, the attacker in the offline phase fix uh, the outcome of two to be seven, three to be one, 104, so on and so forth, at most p coordinates and the rest of them being completely uniformly at random. 
Okay, then the game is played with this random oracle and uh, with the online algorithm, which makes S most T queries. So here we don't we no longer have S because there's no advice anymore. There's just the, the number of coordinates you can fix, which will be uh, related to S later when we show the uh, theorem statement. Okay, so that's the bit fixing model. You can think about when we function collision resistance hash and all the games play in this uh, bit fixing model. All right, so uh, in the in the in the work by uh, CDGS, they show that that delta to be the non-uniform security in the random oracle model. So this S and T will be the size of the advice and the number of queries, and it's it's connected to the security in the speed fixing model when B when P equals to S times T. So in other words, they show that the delta of S and T is roughly equals to epsilon of P and T. So that's um, the connection between uh, non-uniform security and the security in the, the bit fixing model. So in other words, if you want to prove non-uniform security in the random Oracle model, you can prove uh, the security in the bit fixing model with the number of uh, fixed coordinates uh, being S times T, which uh, is uh, much, much bigger than S, but uh, still reasonable. Sorry, uh, are there any question? Okay. Right. Uh, no. Okay. Yes. So yeah. So uh, so and the theorem holds for both search games and decision games, and I will specify later when I, when I give the theorem statement. Uh, when I give the theorem statement for the quantum case. Also, uh, okay. So also when uh, I want I want to note that, that this uh, p equals to st. So in other words, on a high level, an arbitrary s uh, bit device is roughly equals to uh, a well-structured advice, but of length S times T. So here T is the online uh, computation, right? So, and similarly, we can show that uh, because we connect non-uniform security and security in the bit fixing model, we just need to prove uh, security in the bit fixing model and it's much easier to prove. Uh, here's the example in the one-way function. I just described that in words. So that basically if the, the challenge f of x, which is the challenge you want to invert, is not in this st coordinates, then it's basically a brute force search. You, 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 the advantage you get is at most t over n. And otherwise, um, it will uh, fall into this st coordinates with probability at most st over n. So oh, this is the overall advantages. And that matches with the, the lower bound we, we showed before. Um, so, uh, so then, so, okay. So with the pre, the pre sampling theorem, it's very easy to prove non-uniform security. That is, you need to look at the security in the so-called bit fixing model and you prove security in that model. It directly gives you a, a non-uniform security of the corresponding game. So you may want to give a direct quantum analog for the pre sampling theorem. And there's a one attempt that is, you want to say, uh, so we call it like B, Bit, uh, the bit fixing quantum random oracle model, which you arbitrarily and classically fix on p coordinates, just as what we did for the bit fixing classical random oracle model. But the only difference is the online algorithm being quantum. Okay. So uh, if that is true, then to prove non uniform security, uh, we can only prove the security in this proposed uh, uh, bit fixing quantum random oracle model. Right. So uh, if you have, uh, ideally, we want to have a very similar statement. That is, the delta is connected to epsilon, and then we can prove uh, to prove delta. We only need to prove epsilon, which is the security in the bit fixing model. But however, uh, in, in uh, my other work, uh, we show that it's actually uh, in very very hard to quantize. If you can show these two quantities are uh, close under this definition of bit fixing then it implies a major open question in quantum computation, which is called the Aris and Bainis conjecture. So this conjecture asserts that if you want to achieve exponential quantum speed up, you need a structure on inputs. So I, I won't explain too much about it, but uh, this conjecture is one of the central questions in quantum uh, computation. And therefore this suggests that this might not be a good way to go. All right, um, so, so basically, facing this with, with facing with this barrier, uh, we propose a different definition, which is called the 
uh, also we call it like a bit fixing model in the classical setting, but these two are indeed uh, exactly equivalent in the classical setting. So this classical uh, model says that instead of you fixing P coordinates in the offline phase, now we define this fixing as a rejection sampling procedure. So uh, let's uh, have a closer look at the new definition. So here, this fixing is described by a classical algorithm B, which is also, uh, it also makes at most P query classic, uh, it also makes at most P queries. So the rejection sampling is done in the following way. So um, a random oracle is sampled by the challenger and the challenger will run the algorithm B with Oracle access to the random oracle until it outputs one. Okay, so you draw keep sampling random oracle and run B with Oracle access to F until it outputs one. And the game is then played with an online adversary and with this uh, uh, the, 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 the function F. So this rejection sampling will give uh, a slightly different distribution on F. And we can prove that uh, in the classical setting, these two are the same. So, um, so with this definition, um, we can easily uh, quantize that and we can generalize it to the quantum setting, which we call this uh, bit fixing, the real bit fixing quantum random oracle model. So there, um, this, this fixing algorithm is now a quantum algorithm that makes at most P quantum queries and the rejection sampling is simply uh, run uh, by sampling F and run B with quantum Oracle access. So here, this should be B given uh, cat F until the outcomes uh, being one. And also the online algorithm should be a quantum algorithm. Okay, so, uh, and this, this, uh, this definition of bit fixing is much easier to work with and also gives you the, the connection to the non-uniform security. So uh, first of all, we can show um, when we function has security p times t squared over n, and uh, a similar security in the in the uh, quantum bit fixing model. So I and, so sorry, if you, in the offline phase, if you can like do so, if the algorithm can like have unbounded time to run, so what's the difference of this quantum or classical? So, uh. I mean, for for the no here B is a P query quantum algorithm, so that's the difference. So oh. although although you are you have so here um when we def so we, so here in the bit fixing model this B is no longer unbounded, so it's different from the the a device model the the non uniform model here this B is a query bounded algorithm either being classical if that's the classical case or being quantum if that's a quantum case, and it will define a distribution of fun random oracle uh, based on this uh, function, based on condition on this function outputs one. So it's no longer um, unbounded in this case. Oh, so actually, so, so they are like P quantum queries, which is different from a classic. Or, uh, this will be, the, the, so yes. Yeah, so in the, in the quantum analog, the only difference is this both B and A being quantum. So A being quantum is easy to understand. And this B is basically, we wanna, like, like this is a way we, we, we lift the, the theorem theme and we lift the definition. We allow this B to be quantum. So um, I'm not sure if that gives an extra power, but it's easier to prove with. And I, I think probably if you, wh whether or not you can prove a separation, it would give an answer for the Aris and Banyas conjecture, yes. So in other words, if you if you want to say this P B this B be a classical algorithm, uh, if there's no difference between uh, B is a classical or B is a quantum, and A is always a quantum algorithm, then you probably give some answer to the what I just uh, mentioned, the Aris and Banyas conjecture, I believe. Okay. Thank so you. I, I think this B uh, this B being P query quantum algorithm is quite is pretty crucial at least for what we're discussing now. So uh, I think it's interesting, but I don't have a, um, um, yeah, I don't have an answer for that. I, I believe it's a, it makes a big difference. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, any questions? Okay. So yeah. So we know the security in the one-way function uh, in this model of one-way function and the PRGs. So in the in the work we uh, previous work we showed that um, this pre-sampling. Uh, theorem actually works for a classical device. So in other words, 
if um, we work with search game, then delta is roughly equals to epsilon. 1p equals to s times t. So it's uh, exactly the same as the, the classical pre-sampling. Uh, also, I, I, uh, I want to note that the, the theorem only works for classical device. And for decision game, it's also uh, similar. And combining uh, with the, the security in the bit fixing quantum random oracle model, we can achieve that uh, the one way function, the security uh, of, uh, against the non uniform uh, quantum adversary with classical device. So you simply are combining this pre sampling theorem for classical device and the uh, security in the bit fixing quantum random oracle model, you can achieve the security for both one way function and PRG. So, however, uh, this theorem, the pre-sampling theorem for, um, for quantum device is much more complicated and non-tight. So I'm not going to give what it looks like, but for all the applications, they are achieved this, uh, this less tight and more complicated uh, theorem statement. So what we do in this work is basically showing that even with quantum device, this pre-sampling theorem is still true. So we show that uh, let this delta and epsilon to be the non-uniform security and security in the bit fixing model. Then for search game, delta is still equals to two times epsilon. One P is uh, equals to S times T. And similarly uh, for decision game, it's also satisfy uh, a, a very close relation. And together by combining the security in the bit fixing model, we achieve exactly the same security for both uh, one-way function PRG uh, so that's the same as a uh, classical device. So, okay. So, okay. So this, uh, in this work we show uh, with, even with quantum device, the, the lower bound for one-way function is still ST times T squared over N, which says uh, even with quantum device, it's unlikely to help pre-processing attacks. So in other words, the, not the trivial algorithm, which is the rainbow table uh, algorithm plus the Grover search, is likely to be the best possible attacks you can do, even if quantum device is allowed it. And um, so although we see there's a, there's a S squared T over N squared gap, we believe uh, this gap is for only for the classical case, it's not for the quantum case, as we already see that uh, from the classical case. And also we have the result for PRGs and sorting. Okay, so um, what do we have learned? From from other 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 discussions. So first of all, um, we we actually we have seen such a phenomenon. Well, direct lifting some theorem statement sometimes does not work. We need, uh, for example, for the pre-sampling case, we see a barrier. So therefore, usually a, a good approach is to you find a equivalent definition for the classical theorem statement and the classical definition, and you lift the definition and the statement. Uh, to the quantum case, which is usually uh, more quantum friendly. And the, and the second thing is, and the second thing is the scientific fact. That is, if we want to prove non-uniform security with quantum or classical device in the quantum random oracle model, then we can look at the security in the uh, bit fixing quantum random oracle model as I defined before. And for many natural games, uh, quantum device is as good or as bad as classical ones. And finally, if you want your protocol to be secure against uh, um, non-uniform uh, attacks, you just uh, use salt and it will uh, prevent that, uh, prevent uh, non-uniform attacks. So um, yes, so that's uh, what I want to say. And thanks a lot. Okay, I guess if there's no question, let's thank Chipa again.